Thanks, John. We really appreciate it, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce them all right now to talk back fans. Hosts, you see them on the football sidelines. You'll see them at the basketball courts, and once the fast pitch and baseball come, you'll see them at those fields, too. And it's Terry Heil, Pat Langdon, and John Fasiglia. Um, we had Pat on last week, and he said, you should have Terry on. He's the one that started all this. So, Terry, tell us how it all started. I didn't say that, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. Said, you should have Terry on. Yeah, and that, I, that I said. Yeah. All right. No, this so, tell was, us how it got started. This was really Pat and Danny's gig to start. How the high school got started was really somewhat kind of being right place, right time, knowing the right person. Uh, last year, it's Friday of the state championship. I had called a couple of friends of mine who had kids playing for Menor, uh, see if anybody had any extra tickets. I mean, I knew I could get a ticket down there, but just if somebody had one, hey, I'd buy it off of them, no problem. I couldn't find one. Uh, going out to lunch, I get a text from John Zapola, who's the voice of Benedict in football and basketball, and he says, hey, he says, uh, want to come down to the game tonight, uh, Menor game? He goes, I can get you on the field. I said, you know, hey, I was looking for a shot anyway, so eh, no problem. So I went to the game and uh, on the field, and I posted something through Facebook, and Pat calls me and says, hey, where, where are you at? It looks like you're on the field. But I am. So oh, you you got to report. you gotta, you got to do something for the show. And we kicked it around for a couple of minutes and just kind of decided, you know what, I'm going to try to tell people what I would want to see and hear if I were listening. And did that for the Mentor game on Friday night. Got invited back to do the same thing for the Kirtland game on Saturday morning. And a couple of weeks later, Pat and I were having lunch with a buddy of his from Fox Sports. And he kind of asked us, hey, what's the end game for you guys? Where are you guys trying to go with this? And, you know, Pat talked a little bit about something, and he goes, no, no. He goes, you guys are missing this. He said, I saw that stuff you guys did with the high school football. He said, there's your, there's your avenue. He said, you know, with all the cuts that have happened with media around here lately, he said, you know, high school sports in general are really underserved. And we're all big high school sports fans, and, you know, we kind of took that to heart. So those that experience of doing those two games kind of set the baseline for, okay, this is what, this is what at a minimum, we can do coverage-wise. Where do we want to go with it? It was nice that you have that big window in front of football in high school that you don't have in front of these other sports. So we kind of had, you know, the, the spring and the summer to kind of figure out, okay, what do we want to do? Who do we want to approach? How do we want to do this? And it really kind of took off from there. So who decides where you guys go? Because you usually cover one of the, of the top games in the area. Uh, is it a conglomerate of you guys decide on where you're going to be that night? It's a collaborative effort. Uh, we, we obviously look at the schedule like anybody else. And you're looking at trying to find the better game uh, or the best game possible that, that we could cover. We also wanted to make sure that we covered the nine schools that we previewed uh, back in, the, in July in the summertime and make sure that we at least went out and did one of their games for sure. And then in the playoffs, we were fortunate enough that we were split up into twos and, and did Kirtland and Menor two weeks in a row from separate sites. So... Uh, it was more of it, it's a collaborative effort. Obviously, you know the big you know there's certain games on a schedule you look at and you go yeah we're going to go there. We're going to Menor Euclid week nine. We're going you know here. But then then there's a the few off weeks where like oh well we haven't seen these guys. Let's go watch them. We went did North and Brush even though Brush wasn't in in our one of the teams that we previewed. We we did preview North so we decided to go up there and do that one. So. It's all. It's a collaborative effort, and that turned out to be the game of the year for us that yeah. we covered. It was fantastic. Well, that's great. You know, we better shout out. We better, better shout out to Danny Boyce. Um, he may be listening, and Danny's doing a great job with it too. So yeah. it, it's great that you got four, and you can cover two games on a weekend each. And uh, um, this is where it's going. Social media. So uh, you know, everybody could uh, just touch a button on their phone and tune into you guys. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so uh, you know that Terry, Terry did a really nice job of describing what happened as far as what we do. The real reality is, is one day we decided to hit Facebook Live because we had no idea what it did, and <laughs> that's really where it took off for us. We we were we were incredibly fortunate. We went from you know our two or three hundred people watching to five or six, and sometimes over a thousand. On a, on a weekend, so we, we've been very lucky as, as far as social media goes. So, so you had starting with a, a year ago with these state championship games, and then you, you you break in, you get nine high schools, you preview. Mm-hmm. I mean, w- w- as far as the schedule, how did you think it it, it went that first year of, of covering? I, I, I'm blown away by the, you know how receptive people were to us. 
It was was just amazing. We had very few phone calls that weren't returned. Um, we had a couple people who said, you know, look, we're really young this year. I know there's some high expectations. We want to stay under the radar. But nobody really said no to us. And whenever we reached out to a coach or an AD about, hey, we want to come cover this game, we need sideline passes, blah, 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 here's how many, no resistance whatsoever. Uh, Being able to cover two games during the playoffs was great. Um, But at the same time, especially that, you know, when we were able to work, when we were all together, I think there's, you know, my younger, my oldest son was the one who said this. He says, look, you guys did a great job when you split up, but there's a synergy there when the four of you guys are together, and I think it's because everybody kind of falls into their own, their more natural roles, and they're not trying to do double duty. When there's, you know, two of us at a game, you're trying to do something that is maybe just a little bit different than where you feel the most comfortable. Um, I don't have any problem with any of that coverage, but I think, you know, when we were all able to be at the same game, uh, it, those were probably our best efforts, um, and we've kind of laid some groundwork going into football for next year with a, a few other programs. I think we'd like to expand to maybe get to 15. Um, you know, hoops is proving to be a little bit of interesting because, again, you don't have that window in front of hoops like you had in front of football. Um, so from our standpoint, it's more what I've kind of termed state of the program shows as opposed to previews because everybody's season has already started. Um, we're in a process of setting that up already. We were with the Brush Girls last week. We'll be with uh, the John Carroll men's team on Thursday night. We'll be at Benedictine uh, with them on Monday, looking to fill out our schedule. Um, I mean, it's going to go into January and probably into part of February. But, you know, and, and the biggest thing is we found out people like the coaches, but they love the kids. Whether it's, you know, everybody wants to see their son or daughter, their neighbor's kid, their niece or nephew, their grandson or granddaughter. I mean, we had some post-game interviews with the kids that were over 3,000 hits, which, I mean, for us, it's just a huge number. The, the What are the logistics, the logistic difficulties in covering a, a basketball game as opposed to a football game? And I'm just thinking that, of it from the noise standpoint inside of a, a gymnasium. How, how do you... How do you plan on, on going about that? Well, I will tell you, our, our we did the Benedict and Solon game. Saturday night was our first game. We did play-by-play. Um, these two gentlemen, if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to them do play-by-play. John and Terry? Do it. Go and watch it. It's fantastic. They're, um, we've been blessed with some great sponsors, and we have some really nice equipment that allows us to do some things where crowd noise and, and things, you can hear it, it's ambient, but it's not... Right. You know, again, everything. I'm going to knock on wood here. Everything that we've we've tried has been been pretty good for us. So that's kind of how we look at it. But the crowds have been fantastic. We we have people coming up, and and I'm sure you guys see it too, Charlie, a lot when you guys do your your uh, play by plays and things. We're getting recognized, and that that's kind of cool. And um, but. You know, just to be able to, to go into some of these gymnasiums and some of these stadiums and, and get the kind of access we get it has been phenomenal for us. The difference, too, and to answer your question, John, maybe a, a little bit. So with football, we did like a pregame. We do hits at the quarter, halftime, maybe a little interview at halftime if we could find a guest. We've had, you know, Jay's been on with us, John Camp from the News Herald, Mark Podolsky. Uh, we've had some other other guests. Some a couple of the with, ads. Yeah, a couple of the ads. Jeff we had the North, Yeah, we had the North South ads at the North South game. They both came on for us. So the and we do red zone too. And we do red zone stuff on the phone, you know, and shoot it and do that. But then we, for basketball, and it was our first basketball game Saturday, and we did run into some minor technical difficulties, but uh, we were able to to pull through it and get through it. It, 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 and when we're doing play-by-play as compared to just quarterly hits or something like that, obviously it's a much bigger undertaking. Right. And, and, you, and you're going to get into, in the spring, you're going to, going to get into high school baseball as well? Yes, mm-hmm. baseball and softball. Yes. We're going to have a, we're going to bring back what NBC used to have, their game of the week. We're, uh-huh. That's what we're going to do. We're going to bring back the Saturday game of the week. You know, you, you mentioned about being recognized. And I know we're doing the right thing when at the Touchdown Club Banquet, when it ended last night, uh, Noah Potter came up to me and wanted a picture with me. I'm going, why with me? And he just said, thanks for the four years. And his father came up to me and said, thanks for what you guys do. So you guys are doing the exact same thing, even more so because they can log on at any time and yeah. on, on, on the Internet. And what I'd like to see you do, and, and with a coach like Sean Dodd, I'm, I'm picking him out first because uh, I'm not so if, so sure if Steve Trevisano would do it. But I think, like, Right before a game or at half, 
that uh, Sean Dodd would like you guys to come into the locker room. I'm <laughs> telling you, because because you know what, I, that would be really cool. Yeah. I'm telling you, that you we can't leave the booth and right. go into the locker room. Right. You can, and that yeah. would be something to look to and pursue. And I think the fans would just flip out. Yeah. I think we were a little concerned about maybe overstepping our bounds with stuff like that. Again, especially this being our first year, and and obviously we had some relationships going into it. But you know, we're breaking new ground with a lot of guys too. I, I could talk to Sean about stuff like that. But, yeah. but, uh, but down he the would, road, yeah. he he would he would. Yeah. I'm pretty and, sure. And, I'm not going to answer say, for him. They but. were. What Coach, an idea. Coaches were phenomenally receptive to everything that we asked. Um, and to get, kind of address John's issue, so I covered some hoops for us last year. And to me, the biggest logistical problem, because I'm trying to run a book too, is giving a quarterly update. I, it was so much easier when I went to an OAC game and watched John Carroll or BW or happen to watch them play themselves because you get halves. So I can sit there, I can total up my book, I can figure out what I want to say, and you've got a window. To try to come in at the end of the first quarter or the end of the third quarter of a hoop game as you're trying to total stuff up and be able to give people a quick synopsis of what's going on in, was in a, a lot more right. And, and right. And again, I'm doing it by myself. Whereas when we're doing a football game, if it's the four of us, a lot of time it's you know Danny's got the phone, I've got the microphone, Danny's shooting the crowd, I'm giving the quick scoring updates. And there were some times like the Brush North game where there were you know 38 points scored in a quarter, <laughs> you know, and I'm trying to get well in this drive and this drive and it's the, because I like to give the. This was the length of the drive. This was the number of plays. How many through the air? How many on the ground? What were the key plays in the drive? Who scored the touchdown? And it, it got difficult. But with hoops, it's it's tough to do it at the quarter because you've got, it seems like that window of time just disappears. And getting back to what you asked earlier and, and touching on what Terry said, so when we split up and were able to do two football games, I thought it worked pretty well, but I agree with what Terry was saying. When the four of us are together, or at least three of us, you have somebody who's charting the game and, and being the face of it. You have somebody who's, like, putting on the producer hat. You have somebody who's shooting it. Uh, you have somebody who does the, the, the red, red zone, zone stuff, and then we'll comment on that. So everybody sort of, like, gets into their own sort of realm. And and and, and it's not that the, the, the two games that we did were with just twosomes went poorly because they didn't. It just when you have, when you have obviously, you know, double the bodies, right. you're, yeah. you're able to see more. Well, the, the Euclid Metter game, John, you know, normally we're on the field of Euclid Metter game because John was dealing with a little bit of a knee issue. He was up in a booth, and he was able to shoot some stuff down to us, you know, some things that we couldn't quite see from yeah. field level that he could see. It added a different perspective. It was great. So how do you how are you going to approach next season? you got a full season under your belt for, for football, so how are you going to approach it? Would you, would you be best splitting up into twos or going one game with four of you? I mean, what do you guys envision for next year? I think it'll depend on the weekend. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some weekends where you've got multiple big games, um, and, and you know we're going to try to cover as much as we can. There are going to be other weekends where there's really the one spotlight game where it's, I think it'll be pretty easy. And like 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 John said last year, we sat down before the season. We were looking like week nine, we're at Menor Euclid. End of story. Um, there were times I think where we kind of looked back and said, okay, well, yeah, boy. Would have been nice to have done this game, too. Would have been nice to have done that game, too. But for us, the biggest focus was these nine schools gave us their time and, and, and their coaches and their players. We wanted to make sure that we saw them before we kind of went outside and tried to expand it. Um, so it was very important for us, hey, let's make sure we get to everybody's home game. Let's make sure we get everybody covered. And then we can kind of worry about trying to stretch it a little bit and expand it. And even when we hit the playoffs, and so you're dealing basically with, you know, Menor was one of our schools, Kirtland was one of our schools, so we were dealing with some schools that we hadn't before, and when Pat and I did the Menor St. Ed's game, Tommy Lombardo was great. We went up, introduced ourselves beforehand, you know, they happened to win the game, we were getting an interview with him afterwards, he was fantastic. So it's been, the re- like you said, the re- the reception that we've gotten from, from and, and coaches has been great. To, to kind of go on John's point there a lot of the coaches from the schools that we didn't cover um, Coach McQuaid from Solon was one uh, your guy from Padua yeah Coach Coach Polo from Padua right we we went up introduced ourselves beforehand said hey after the game win or lose we'd like to have and to a to a man they said absolutely whatever you need mm-hmm. so I'm sure you guys see the same thing when you guys do your things too. So. You know, the the, the, the good, or the unique thing that you got going is you're not restricted. You're restricted by there's only four of you guys. You can only do so much. But 
you're not restricted like the News Herald is to the News Herald area. I mean, you can talk about Paddle, you can talk about St. Ed's, mm-hmm. and you get the you get you get the same result right. uh, covering those schools. So you're talking about going to 15. So when you do a preview, when you did a preview last year, what were the mechanics of that preview? How did you do it? What did you know going in? Who did you interview? And things of that nature. Well, the reality is, is we, you know, Terry did the the bulk of the reaching out to the programs. Um, we prepared for as much as we could as far as rosters went and things like that. But we left it on the coach to say, who are you going to bring us? Right. And, and, and really let the coaches and, and the players tell their story. We, we just ask the questions and kind of kind of similar to what you guys do here on Monday nights. Um, we just, you know, let them tell the people out there that wanted to know what it is that they thought about this coming year and, and their, them individually. And the logistics are very simple. We, we're in two bags. We can roll them anywhere we need to go. So as long as we don't have any equipment malfunctions, we're, we're pretty good. So and we went to the, we went to the we went to the teams. And almost without fail, I mean, it, it was Benedictine and Lake where we weren't at the field. Uh, we were inside the building. But the other ones, I mean, we were set up on the track, set up a table and some chairs. And, you know, typical scenario was assistant coach, probably three players. And then we'd spend the last 20 to 30 minutes with a head coach. And it was amazing how quickly head coaches kind of opened up and relaxed. And you could kind of see at some point the, the wall kind of went down. Um, and we had some phenomenal conversations with coaches um, that I would have never imagined were going to happen. And we had the, the other night with the Brush Girls, with Damaris. Now, he's a very polarizing figure. He's very charismatic. I, Pat said it right. We could have started the conversation by saying, Coach, tell us about your program this year. And 20 minutes later, he would have taken a breath. Just take just take our microphones off and right. let him roll. Um, but it, it's just, you know, it was amazing how receptive people were. Um, and again, I mean, you get kids up there, and I mean, you know, we, you know, we tried to keep it to football, and and you know, future after football, and um, you know, I think one of the things that surprised us was, you know, we had on more than one occasion a coach would say, "Man, that's a great question. Boy, that's a really good question," and it's like, okay, well. You know, we, we did a little bit of homework. Um, you know, we know a little bit about the game. Um, you know, one that stands out to me is Sean Dodd. I had asked him about how hard it was to leave Gilmore after what he had built there. And he looked at me and said, that's a great question. Nobody has ever asked me that. And, and I was shocked. I, I didn't know how to respond. I was quiet for a very brief which is period. Which is very happens. difficult. Right. Yeah, which, which doesn't happen very often. Um and, and so it was things like that, but that was the mechanics of it. It was go out, hey, we're going to be here for an hour. I think there were a couple places we were maybe an hour 15. Um, I can only think of one that was a little short of an hour, and I think it probably ran 55 minutes. It wasn't like it, it ran significantly shorter than that. Um, and we tried to get out in front of doubles. You know, we tried to do it in June and July when people were utilizing their 10 days that the state gave them. And that seemed, you know, initially there were a couple people said to Pat, why do you guys want to come out that early? And then we did a few of them, and people like, oh, wow, this it, it yeah. makes too much sense. It really works. Um, and I we think tried, the fact that we were willing to go to them was well, really helpful. And I, I think we tried in our first year to get out in front of everybody else's coverage just because we didn't right. want to get, you know, we, we're the new kid on the block, so to speak, and we wanted to make sure that people knew why we were doing what we were doing and how we were doing it. And it's a little different when you're trying to compete with the News Herald, who who does phenomenal coverage. Obviously, WINT does great coverage, and all the other, uh, you know, Friday Night Touchdown from his his place of work and, and places Fox. like that on Fox. On right? Fox. So, um, <laughs> and, and then as far as you, you preview these nine teams, and you've got games that you've already determined you're going to do. Mm-hmm. So, wh- what do you do as far as following, and, and at least following their their how they did Friday night and their stats, just to keep it up. So if you got them in week four, you know what's going on well, this season. On, I would, okay, I, on Tuesday nights, when we do our regular show on Tuesday nights, um, the last half hour we leave for high school coverage, and Jay comes on with us on Tuesday nights, and we, we recap. Terry really does the majority of it, but we recap the nine teams that were in our, our quote-unquote coverage area what they did, and then what they have upcoming. And then that's that's how we've followed them from year on. And then we try to 
basically have a game picked for Friday on Tuesday going forward. And tell, tell us about, because you've been doing the Tuesday show from Lino's. Mm-hmm. Lino's. So how long have you been doing that, and, and what, 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 what's that show all about? What do you do on a, on a Tuesday night? Um, the simplest way to talk about it is, is it's four guys sitting around talking about sports. Um, and pop culture and, and nonsense. And, and, yeah, it, Stupidity. We, we have, we've we been blessed. He already said pop culture. <laughs> right. Time, so. right. We, we've been blessed. The, the four of us seem to get along so far. So it's been really good. But more importantly, the people that listen and watch our, our stuff are in on the, on, the, on the gag a little bit. So it, we have some really good people that really contribute a lot of really good stuff. And, you know, we're just, at the end of the day, we're fans. This is, this is, you know, obviously we all have day gigs, but we really enjoy what we're doing, and, and that's what makes it great. And the people that, that watch it, you know, they make it fun too. I know Terry can, will tell you that some of, some of our people are trying that, that uh, watch our stuff, but that makes it great. I mean, it makes it awesome. When, when people disagree with what it is we're saying, it makes it even better. So it did. The, the name of the show, I think, speaks for itself. Talk back fans, and they've been doing it. It was Pat's, Pat and Danny been doing it forever. Terry's been around for a year and a half. I'm the newbie. I came on in July, and I was on last year a few times as a guest and a fill-in when people weren't available. But I'm just, uh, I'm sort of flabbergasted at how it's taken off and and the things that we've been able to do. And, it, it, and a lot of it. The, they deserve a lot more credit than that than I do, for sure. And, and then in the context of Facebook, by views and likes and however they measure everything, mm-hmm. how have you done as you've gone along, with starting with the Talkback fan show to the to the football coverage from there? How's well, the, the show has become our, our home base. Our, our, our special coverage, is, as we like to call it, our, our games and our... You know, going to the Miracle League in, in Wickl- or, excuse me, in East Lake and, and places like that. Those are the ones that really take off because those are us getting out into and actually talking to the people that are playing and being part of, of the community. And that's, but the numbers have been really great. I mean, as far as you know, we've had some that you know the East Lake North preview was the when when we got there we were like. I don't know how this is going to be. No one's sharing this. Nobody's doing nothing. And the next thing we know, it was like what six thousand or something. It was well, it went yeah. to fifteen hundred yeah. views pretty yeah. quick, right. like that overnight. Oh, I mean, we went, yeah. to, we walked out of there, and and the number was a little higher than anywhere else we had been. Um, and you know, we kind of we kind of kid jokingly. We have a chat room for for the guys in the show. Um, we go back and forth on some stuff, and somebody had posted, you know, at about eleven o'clock at night. Hey, we're up to like five hundred views. And then we woke up in the morning, and you looked at it at seven thirty or eight in the morning, and it's fifteen hundred. It's like, where did these thousand people? How did these thousand people watch this overnight? Um, and again, that that's the thing that's been kind of a crime. So, you know, we had a couple of weeks ago the, the Kirtland playoff game, thir- three thousand views from the post game interviews. Um, you know, we've done some small college stuff. We were at the Notre Dame college game, um, their playoff victory uh, two weeks ago in the quarterfinals. We did a show for the second year in a row from the University of Cincinnati, which was a little different than our normal coverage. We were at the tailgate. We were at the, the family tailgate. My oldest son plays football at UC. We were at the family tailgate beforehand, and then we interviewed. Last year was a couple administrators and a couple players. This year we interviewed, what was it, six players, uh, four of whom are from northeastern Ohio. Um, a couple other Ohio guys, but but from down that way, interviewed one of the administrators as well. Um, you know, they gave us the run of the press box, and I'm, it, it's funny. My youngest son makes the comment; he's made it more than once. The amount of people who think that we're legitimate is alarming. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it really, as I said, I mean, just how receptive people have been to what we're trying to do. Um, you know, again, we thought last year when we went to Cincinnati, we figured, okay, well, we're in the stands. No, no, we had, we had press passes. We were up in a box. Uh, this year we had access to the field before the game as well, um, which where Pat and I had a pretty interesting conversation with a gentleman involved with the Naval Academy. Um, the, but com- the commandant of the Marine Corps as it relates to the, the Naval Academy. That yeah. was a fantastic conversation. Yeah, and it was all because I just kind of reached out and said hello, and it turned out he was at Texas A&M when I was doing graduate work at Texas. So, they again, yeah. it was just one of those things where it's like, boy, they, they, this is this is too bizarre. How do, We have something in common, and we didn't know each other from Adam before the, before I reached out my hand and said hello to him. Well, I mean, you've got to carry on. 
Um, we're, get, we're getting to the bottom of the hour and almost a break, but I want you to update us on your state championship son who went to the University of Cincinnati, right? Right, yeah. He started at the Air Force Academy, and it was just a not, not the right fit for him. So he is, um, he is a junior athletically. He's a senior academically. Um, he will graduate on time in the spring, uh, double major in finance and econ. And um, he's got one more year of eligibility left. Um, and at this point, I, I would guess that he's going to stay there and finish it out there. Um, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, he probably hasn't played as much as any of us would have liked, but he's busted his butt. And, and I think the thing I give him the most credit for is he realizes that having Division One football on his resume, being on the dean's list more than he hasn't been while he's been there, going through what he's had to go to and all the adversity that he's dealt with, well, that's going to mean a lot to an employer one day. And at the end of the day, even if he's fortunate enough to get a paycheck to play football, he's going to have a job like the rest of us. Well, that's great. You know, um, we really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, uh, again, like I said, it's a page out of our book. I um, will send you our schedule um, all into... It's just about done until uh, we go. We we start back up with Mondays being uh, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. We miss those two Mondays. Mm -hmm. Then the national championship games on the seventh. We miss that day, and then uh, we start back on the fourteenth. So we all have three weeks off, and then we go to the end of April. So. and uh, I know uh, Ron Samich would like us to go longer than that. If we could fit in some shows, some baseball shows, maybe we will. Mm-hmm. We'll see. But uh, we really appreciate you guys being here tonight. With Without question, keep up the great work. Uh, you said you're too, and uh, it's it's phenomenal what you're doing. I really, really think so, John. And uh, it's the happiest I've ever seen John Fasiglia, for crying out loud. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Pat, Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. And, uh, thank, thank you guys for you know yeah, really supporting us. It. We appreciate everything that you, you have said. Some really nice things about us over the oh. over the course of this, and, and we appreciate it. And then, as I told you privately, Charlie, anything we can do to help you guys, you just let us know. We appreciate it. And I'm going to get there on a Tuesday, one of these Tuesdays. This is uh, Integrity Radio, Mondays with Malta. 101.5 FM, 1330 AM, and coast to coast and around the world on your mobile device on WINTradio.com. We'll be right back.